Hi, Church. Uh, so, I, last summer, did one of these videos for 21 Days of Prayer, and my video was like 17 minutes long. So, uh, I'm gonna try to shorten my video this time, maybe make up the difference. Um, but I have not given myself an outline, I just have a general idea of what I wanna talk about, um, because it's just kind of come to me over the weekend, and I tend to lose my thoughts if I don't just say them and try to skip that step and write down things and then regurgitate those words. So I'm just going to talk and hope my point comes across. And if it doesn't, maybe I'll just make a different video later. But um, I'll start with uh, a scripture that Jeff used on Sunday, this past Sunday. Um, Psalm 42, 5 says, Why are you downcast, O my soul, and why are you in turmoil within me? Hope in God, for I shall again praise him, my, sal my salvation and my God. Uh, just a very few people in the church know that we have been um, doing a buying and selling house scenario over the past month, month and a half. Um, we live in a neighborhood with an HOA that doesn't allow Joe to park his commercial vehicle, his Comcast van, at our home. Um, and we've been doing that for four years. It's never been enforced. Um, it, it is a rule that we've known about, but without enforcement, we've ignored it. And then this year, they've begun to enforce that rule. And so um, instead of complying, which I now wonder if that was God's first choice for us to comply with this rule, I dug my heels in and I said, we're not gonna do that. That's gonna change our lives more than I want to. And um, we thought we, we got an answer from God about staying or going, and we decided then it was time to go. We were gonna sell our house and move to the country and live our dream of raising chickens and having lots of land, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, so my dreams are not always God's dreams for me. And I've been learning that, oh my goodness, increasingly every day over the last month that uh, I was chasing my own goals and my own dreams and through each step of this buying and selling process, God has been closing door after door after door that has not only not let us move to the country, but has us in another subdivision um, within the city that does not allow Joe to park his van <laughs> at our house. Um, we, we are very new in the process. The house I'm speaking of today maybe could not even be our house as he's continually shut doors. Maybe he'll shut this one too. But um, that's where we are right now. And over the weekend, uh, I went through a variously wide stage and range of emotions. I, um, like I said, God has shut doors over and over again. And I preach constantly to uh, my husband, my daughter, myself, my friends, that God is in control. And if he's shutting doors, go with it because God's plans are better than our plans. And if he's shutting the door, you can't walk through it. So don't be mad, just keep going. And I have not, I stopped believing that over the last month. I don't know how or why, but I let this whole situation get me so down because I felt like I should have some level of control uh, over this in my life. And especially because I, I had dug my heels in and decided we're leaving this neighborhood because of Joe's van. Um, I've been getting increasingly annoyed that the thing I was fighting against is actually going to continue to be a part of our lives. Um, so through, through all of the doors shutting, I realized I wasn't living my faith in Jesus and my trust that, that God's plan is perfect. And I am asking myself this weekend, even before Jeff preached this message on Sunday, I was saying to myself and saying to God, I'm sorry for the attitude I've been having because I'm not trusting you. And I talked about this over the summer. Like apparently I'm just learning this lesson for multiple years on end because just this summer I, I talked about the same situation of trusting God and, and the ways he works things out. Um, in ways that I can't foresee. I cannot, for the life of me, ever figure out what he's doing until after he's done it. I don't know if that's the same for everyone or if it's just my relationship with the Lord, but I, I always feel like I have hints and glimpses and I run after stuff and then when he shuts the door in my face, I get all bristly like, what, 
I thought you wanted me to do this. What are you doing? And I get agitated with him. And it's kind of like this, this weird, honest, raw kind of relationship <laughs> where he knows exactly how I'm feeling. I don't try to hide that from him. But um, obviously we can't hide that from him. But anyway, I was downcast. And I've asked myself, why are you downcast? You still live in America. You still have a home. You're not going to be homeless. The house we're moving to is actually an upgrade from ours. It's newer and it's larger. Um, we're not going backwards. We're only going forwards. And God is blessing us regardless of what I think I want or what is best for me. He knows what is best for me. And he's gently, but over the weekend, I thought harshly guiding us towards that. I still don't know what it is. Like I said, I still don't know if this house that we currently are after is the house we're going to end up in. Um, but regardless of all that, I am now understanding again for probably the 15th time in the last year that my plans are not his plans and his plans are not my plans. And I need to get on board with his plans and just roll with it. Just go with it, fighting it. It has only caused me turmoil. Um, some of our closer friends have seen me just going through this roller coaster over the last month and a half of, I'm so excited. I am so upset. Like, <laughs> I just can't even stabilize. And if I was trusting God, I could totally stabilize. Um, so again, here I am. I'm rambling. But my my point is, why are you downcast, O oh my soul, and why are you in turmoil within me? Hope in God, for I shall again praise him, my salvation and my God. Where we live is not that big a deal. I'm sure the Lord puts us in, in various places in our lives to be witnesses, to uh, build relationships, to have experiences that we wouldn't have in other places. I don't, I don't think it's all willy-nilly. Um, wherever we end up, God is directing that. And all I have to do is walk. Um, I've prayed that for years, that, that whatever is coming for our future, whether it be the church or myself or my family, um, my, my husband's job, whatever it may be, I, I always ask the Lord to help us just walk and, and take one step at a time. We don't need the whole big picture. We don't need to be able to... Um, to know exactly what his plan is. Our only job is to walk in the next step. So that's what I'm trying to do. I've not been doing a very good job of it, but um, that's what he's teaching me right now through my prayer life. And like I said, um, I've poured my heart out and I've also been angry and I've been defeated and I've felt so many emotions that I could have been spared. I could have spared myself from if I... Um, had talked to him first in a more accepting what do you want me to do manner instead of why are you doing this manner or um, why are you keeping me from the things I want for myself why aren't you letting me have these things um, so that's my spiel over the weekend I actually thought I coordinated the 21 days of prayer and I thought that I'm not going to have anything to say this year uh, we're starting January 2021. I was so excited, and then I thought, I am too down. I have nothing to say. All I am is upset with God. I can't share that with the church. That's not encouraging. So I'm not going to make a video. How is that okay? But here we are. The weekend has has turned me around um, through some, some pretty significant prayer with God. And then Jeff's message on Sunday was just icing on the cake. He basically like was patting me on the head and <laughs> confirming confirming what I've been um, picking up from the Lord lately. So anyway, church, I'm excited for 2021 together. Um, I am excited to hear the rest of, um, of the videos this coming month and, and what we've all got going on. Let's be praying for one another, not just sharing our burdens and our stories, but continuing to then learn from one another, praying for one another, um, and being the church together even when we're not together. So I'll see you through a screen, I'm sure, on a Sunday, and I hope to see your faces again soon. Bye.